So let me show you how this works. In, this is like the theory of, of, of how we measure things. How do we actually do it in practice? So the way we're going to carry this out in practice is you think about discrete data. I got two time periods. I got x1 naught up to xn naught, p1 naught up to pn naught, m naught, x11 up to xn1, p11 up to pn1, m1. Right? So that's my data. I got period zero or condition zero where we consume this mix of goods at these prices and this income level. Period one, we consume this mix of goods at these prices and this income level. Right? And I want to look at the change over time. And I can write M1 over M0 equals the sum over I of xi1, pi1, over sum over i, xi0, pi0. Right? That's by definition. That is to, this income is the sum of all the expenditures. This income is the sum of all those expenditures. So the ratio has got to be that. We often do something like this. Right? This is the sum of xi0, pi1 over the sum of xi0 pi0 times the sum of xi1 pi1 over the sum of xi0 pi1. And you'll notice that works because I got the same thing here and here. I've, I've just introduced that term in both places. Well, what is this? What is the sum of xi naught pi1 divided by the sum of xi naught pi naught? That's asking the question, how much would it cost in period one to buy what I bought in period zero compared to how much it cost in period zero? Right? The classic, what we call the spares price index. Right? It's a price index that takes my period zero bundle and ask, how much would it cost to buy it now? And we say, if this number is bigger than that number, we say prices went up. I can't afford for the same dollars to buy what I bought yesterday. And if this went down, I would say, I can more than afford to buy what I bought yesterday today. Okay? Any questions that people have? And you'll notice that this is the same concept we had over here. Because I'm comparing the cost of the same bundle at different prices. Right, if you want to write it in terms of changes, just subtract 1, and then you'll see it's xi0 pi1 minus pi0 divided by that. Right? It's like the change, the change from 1. Right, so this is exactly what that formula is telling me to do. It's a first order approximation to the cost function. That's my Lisper's price. This you see a little bit less, but it's important. This is what we call a quantity index. It's a quantity index because it's taking a fixed set of prices and valuing the two bundles at the same prices. Everybody understand that? Everybody understand what this, why this is a quantity index? Because it's measuring what's different between the top and bottom is the quantities and the prices we're using are, in this case, the period one prices. Sometimes people talk about base year. For this comparison, period zero is the base year for my price index, and period one is the base year for my quantity index. Okay? If you want them to add up, it always got to work like that. If you're going to use period zero for your price index, you need to use period one for your quantity index. Okay? It's not unique to this problem. Every problem has that feature. Right? Everybody understands that? Understand why that is? Just think about a map, right? I want to get from here to here. Right? 
To get from here to here, I got two choices. If I can only move one direction at a time, right? I can go this way and then go that way. Or I can go this way and then go that way. Right? That's two choices. So I could have done this. Could have done my price index with ones, and then I would have done my quantity index with zeros. That corresponds to these two paths. But I can't do this. I can't go this way and then go that way and end up here. It doesn't work. Okay? That's why you got to do one at one and one at the other. If you want to get from A to B, you kind of got to move and then move. All right? Anyway, that's just kind of the geometry of it. So this is the kind of way that we're going to approach prices and quantities. And why is this a decent way to go? I'm not saying it's a perfect way to go. What makes us motivated to think this makes sense is the fact that this is a first order approximation to which one? Which would be a first order approximation to what? Cost function, right? Because I got the same price, same quantities, and I'm comparing prices. This is a first order approximation to utility. Okay. So when people start talking about measuring quantities and prices using a price and quantity index approach, you might say, well, geez, why do you do that? Isn't that some arbitrary way to like do things? Not really arbitrary. It really makes, it's really gotten a lot of grounding into consumer theory. It tells us that, you know, first order approximation. Any questions that people that people have? <laughs>